Right, I've won. Where's that tree here? Thought I'd do a video on my Denitz replica Confederate Army revolver. So, this is it. You don't get this holster with it, but I just thought I'd show you it in the holster so you can see how it fits in there. You can get these holsters from quite a few different places. I got this one from Range Right Limited, and it was a, uh, it's a proper real leather holster. I've no idea what the price is now, or even then. May have been about 8 quid. But it fits in the holster perfectly, same as the other, um, the Colt Peacemaker. Barrel sticks out the end because it's a longer gun, but it fits in good. You can see the trigger fits just where you'd want it. So this is the gun. I've shown you the holster in another video, so if you want to see that, watch my other video. I'll add a link to that. Yeah. So this is the Confederate Army revolver, originally designed and made by Griswold and Gunnison. And it was a 36 caliber, 0.36 caliber, muzzle loaded cap and ball revolver. And I'll show you the mechanism of that. And this replica does do a full sort of, you know, cycle. You can, you can fully replicate doing it, you know. So single action, meaning you have to... Pull the hammer back to be able to shoot it. Pulling the trigger won't do anything. Each time you pull the hammer back, the cylinder does revolve. Not sure how much you can take this apart, as far as I'm aware, not really. Not not how you would traditionally anyway. I think originally you would push this out here, and then that would allow it to be took apart. But the... Uh, the bar for loading the ball bearings and that actually works. It does actually go into, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, it's just there. It does actually go into the chambers. So you can sort of imitate doing it. What you'd do, you'd put the black powder in, then the lead ball, you then pull this handle down, seat it in place, and then on the back here where these little nipples are, you'd put the percussion cap on. Obviously those parts are completely solid. Inside the chambers, I'm not sure if I did this, I can't remember now. I don't know if you'll be able to see it because the gun's too long, it's going to hit the camera. But I put some ball bearings in there just so when you look down the chambers it looks sort of like it's loaded. Just makes it look a bit more realistic. Yeah, so now, they're made from a metal that obviously can't be converted. And, uh, you know, that's obviously a good thing. Um, but yeah, for what they are, I really like these. Uh, I think this one's about 60 quid. But they are good wall hangers. They do look like the real thing. They're not... You can't take them apart, but, um, you know, I don't really think that matters. You could probably buy more expensive versions if you wanted to. But the fact that you can dry fire it, the cylinder turns, cylinder turns, the muzzle loading bit works, the rod, you know, I don't actually know specifically what it's called. But, um, yeah. I think they're certainly good for what they are. I've hung these on the walls for years and I think they look good. Look realistic. And they're good to play around with as well. They've got just enough function that you can, you know, you could probably use it as a film prop. Yeah. About 60 quid. Weighs 975 grams, so as heavy as the real thing, I'd assume. This one, the barrel is just under 8 inches, and the whole gun is longer than a foot. Looks like about a foot and one and a half inches. 
to about 13 and a half inches by the looks of it, 13 and a half. Barrel, I won't better show you that either, but the barrel goes right down somewhere about here. Yeah, I think it's good gun, you know, for what they are. Don't do nothing with it, but they're good wall hangers. You know, you can't shoot it, I mean, when I say that. But it's a good wall hanger, good movie prop, and uh, good if you just want to know what a one of these type of guns felt like, you know, and if you wanted to mess around with it. They're not too expensive to, you know, if you damaged it sort of thing, you know, messing around with it. Because you're not really supposed to dry fire guns, but it's not going to matter with a replica because it's never designed to shoot anyway, you know. So, that is the Confederate Army Revolver from 1860, made by Griswold and Gunnison originally. This is the Danix replica. Well, I hope that helped you if you was interested in buying these off of anyone, you know, you sort of know what you're getting now and the quality of them. Right, don't forget to visit my blog, there'll be a link below, might be some interesting stuff on there and like I said, I hope, I, I hope you found this helpful. See you later. Right, before you leave, if you ever wanted to support this channel, you can now via Patreon or by shopping at Amazon.com and Gearburst. There's more info below if you need that. Remember, if you want to get full notifications for this channel, click the bell. And uh, I'll see you later. Cheers.